so uh, I was wrong and I made two mistakes at least you know two that I'm aware of and uh, you know in the old times uh, a mathematician that made a mistake uh, had to commit suicide immediately or something because you know math is supposed to be flawless and no and has no have no mistakes but uh, two things first of all it's not realistic mistakes happen and secondly that's partially why I like to compute so much so I don't believe myself I make mistakes I always make mistakes uh, if I compute and the results are consistent, I cross-check this against that, and you know, at the end the results are consistent, uh, my confidence is greatly, greatly, greatly raised. Uh, so it's not so important when you do 300 years old mathematics, when you do calculus. It becomes more important when you do things that, uh, well, when you do research. So anyway, uh, this said, that my two mistakes are, are, you know, well, one is classical. This is like well, maybe 100 years old. And one is just stupid. Anyway, so uh, homework two, problem two is false. It's just wrong. OK? Uh, and uh, uh, let me explain what was supposed to be the proof, uh, and then also why it's wrong, OK? Uh, and I actually thought the proof was right, because I you know, didn't see something. So the problem stated that uh, the difference in genus is less than or equal to the Gordian distance. And the obvious way to prove it is to show that if you make a crossing change, the distance, the, 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 the genus changes by at most one. If you make a single crossing change, then the gen, gen, genus changes by at most one. And here's the lovely proof. So the lovely proof is, so suppose I want to make a cross a, 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 a crossing change to this crossing. Okay? So um, uh, and suppose I already have a ciphered surface for this uh, knot. I want to construct the ciphered surface to the knot that you will get after the crossing change, uh, uh, which will be at most genus one different, okay? So that cipher, the ciphered surface of this knot uh, is going to have a kind of a flaps, I don't know what to call it, sides uh, that uh, uh, parts whose boundaries are this, um, this, this edge, and another part whose boundary is that edge. I'm drawing them as if one comes from the left and the other comes from the right. You can make similar drawing in other cases, or you can bend them, twist them. Locally, it, it, you can make it be this way. Uh, so now, uh, I want to flip this crossing. The way I will flip this crossing is I will add two twisted bands. So I will add a twisted band uh, going this way, and another one going uh, 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 going, I think, the same way, actually. Uh, yes. Okay, so I, I would so I add two twisted bands. Now, first of all, adding two twisted bands, you can check adding two bands at most adds one to the genus. So 
So the gene is changed by at most one. Uh, but also, by doing this, now I can do a, oh no, sorry, 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 I wanted it this way. Right, uh, sorry. So now I can do a Reitermeister 2 move here. And what I'm left with is the opposite crossing. So I flip the crossing and the genus changed by at most one. QED. Okay, what's wrong with that? And I admit that I failed to see it. Uh, you see, um, there might be other um, parts of the surface, other membranes that pass between the two layers. Right? I, I really have sort of the blue flap and the red flap. What if there are more uh, parts, other parts of the surface that pass in between? Then I cannot add these uh, twisted bands without creating intersections. Fail, wrong. Indeed, so for a second I thought, oh, I could fix this. But then I went to my computer and I looked up the tables, uh, which are of course on the computer, so I really write and wrote a little script to search. And it wasn't really even necessary because it turned out that already 6.2 is a counterexample. So here is the not 6.2, and I claim that its unnoting number is one. So with one crossing change, you can turn it to the unknot. But that would mean if the, if, 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 if the problem was correct, was true, then that would mean that the genus is at most one, because the genus of the unknot is zero. So if I can get to the unknot with one move, with one, with one crossing change, then, then this would have to be at most genus one. But I claim that the, but the genus is two. At the moment, we don't have the tools to prove that the genus is two, but we will later. OK? So you'll have to take it on faith that, that, this, that, that the genus is two. Uh, but the, the fact that the uncrossing number is one is easy. All I have to show you is that you can flip one crossing and get the unknown. So take this crossing, this is 6-2, and flip, sorry, this is 6-2, and take this crossing and flip it, you get this. It's actually not obvious that this is the unknown. But if you look at it for a little while, it is. So basically, you can flip this king over, right? And then you'll have this strand will be going over here. And it also goes over here. So you can do a Reitermeister 2 to kill the crossings that will be here and, and this crossing. And similarly, you can kill the crossings that will be here and that crossing. And you will be left with a single crossing. So you will be left with a picture like this. And this is, again, the unknot by uh, the twisting a king. So here is uh, a question for those of you who are artistically minded. Uh, are there any? You know what? It doesn't matter, because there are people who are watching it on video. In fact, I mean, there are even people taking it for Mark who are watching it on video. So uh, uh, so maybe they are artistically minded. Anyway, here's the question to the artistically minded. So you see, the fact that this is the unknot implies that it bounds a disk. And in fact, you can sort of start creating this disk. So here, this bound the disk, so uh, like this is a little thing, and uh, you, you know there is another part in behind, and the two parts are connected with uh, the two domains are, are connected with a twisted band. So this is the disk. Now you can undo the Reitermeister moves that I just did to get from here to here while pulling the disk along, and you'll get a disk whose boundary is this. Uh, I was not able to draw it. This is above my imagination. This is above my ability to, to, to imagine. I mean, probably if I spent hours on it, I could, but I didn't. But if you draw it, my expectation is that you will get a membrane separating the overstrand and the understrand here. I mean, if you didn't, the argument would be true. 
So I would like to see it. So that's the challenge to the artistic limit. Is it uh, is it a picture of a disc that looks like the or not here? That's so what I want is a picture of a disc whose boundary is this. Okay. Okay. So a surface. So just a drawing of a surface, nice, clean, three-dimensional, with shading, if you're artistically minded, right? So that it will be obvious that it's a surface, it will be obvious that it's a disk, uh, it will be obvious that its boundary is that, uh, and then there must be a, 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 a membrane passing between these two layers, okay? So before going back to the other mistake, sorry, I'm, I'm, this is my, okay. I'm reminded of a completely different question that has nothing to do with this class, okay? So, uh, uh, but, but it's kind of similar to this question. So uh, here is the Mobius band, right? Here is the Mobius band. Uh, the boundary of the Mobius band is an unknotted disk. Sorry, what am I saying? The boundary of the Mobius band is the unknot. Okay? Hence, there is an embedding of a disk into R3 whose boundary is a Mobius band. Sorry, whose boundary, sorry, what am I trying to do? What am I trying to say? Sorry, sorry. Ah, sorry, I just said completely wrong things. Sorry. The boundary of the Mobius band is the unknot. Now I can deform this knot, this unknot, to a, to a circle, and then pull the surface along <laughs> along with me, okay? So it's exactly the opposite of what I said. What I wanted to say is, so, so then you will get a Mobius band, a, a Mobius band whose boundary is a geometric circle. So uh, challenge, question, this is also for the artistically minded. So draw a Mobius, uh, Band, so a surface homeomorphic to a Mobius band uh, in R3, and I mean embedded, so not self intersection, whose uh, boundary is not just a topological circle but a geometric circle. A geometric uh, circle. It's not how obvious bands are usually drawn. So it's kind of a fun question, and it's of a similar spirit. OK, so that was one mistake that I made. The other mistake that I made is, uh, and this is equally stupid, uh, I, uh, I said that if you drop Rydermeister 1, uh, sorry, if, if you want to, to look at frame knots, then, uh, uh, then you drop Rydermeister 1, but you have to put another relation instead. And the relation I wrote was this. And this is wrong. Sorry, the relation is that. So this relation also holds for frame knots. But as we said, it's a consequence of Rydermeister 2 and Rydermeister 3. In fact, you can just sort of, you can somehow, you can see, you can slide it around. And we, we went through it. So this one follows from Rydermeister 2 and Rydermeister 3, so there is nothing to impose. But this relation, uh, so first of all, you can make it with a band, and you can check that it holds. Second, you can, uh, or, or alternatively, you can count the right. So this is a positive crossing, and this is a negative crossing. So the right is, is zero. Uh, but 
but this relation does not follow from Rademeister 2 and 3. So this relation that this is equal to the unknown does not follow from Rademeister 2 and 3. Why does it not follow from Rademeister 2 and 3? In fact, this will come either later today or, or on Friday. But you can show that Rademeister 2 and 3 do not imply this relation. So in fact, the checks we did uh, on Monday were not sufficient. We should have checked this relation elsewhere. So I faked history and went into the notebook that we played it, uh, that we play with on Monday, and added one line, which is a test of this relation, and uh, and it passes. So so we actually do have an invariant, okay? But but true to but on Monday we didn't, or at least we didn't verify it. What do you need to test to test if this relation is uh, is true? Okay, so using our notation, using the notations that the programs use. So basically, this is a tangle with two crossings. So let's make it out of two crossings. One of them, let's call it one two. Let's call the strand in it one two, and the other one three four. And uh, my conventions are. Well, okay, sorry, this is a positive crossing, this is a negative crossing, so this is an R, this one is an R, this one is an R bar. My convention is that you do the over cross, the over strand first. So this is an R12 and this is an R bar 43. And then you need to multiply, so basically you multiply in the algebra, well you get four, you get an element in the fourth tensor power of the algebra. First factor, second factor, third factor, fourth factor, and then you multiply those four factors in order. So you multiply one and two, put the output in one, you multiply one and three, put the output in one, multiply one and four, put the output in one, and this should be equal to eta one. So I typed it, hit enter, it worked. Now I'm happy. At least until a further mistake is discovered. Okay, are you with me? Good. Uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, here's our schematic uh, situation, our schematics, where we are schematically. We have some space of tangles, okay? And then, given an involutive Hopf algebra, plus an element R, which satisfy lots of axioms, right? I'm not writing this. Uh, we get an invariant Z, whose values are in powers of that Hopf algebra. Okay? Um, and, uh, and I'm a bit unhappy about this situation. So I'm unhappy for three reasons. So, one reason is that this is slow. Well, hopefully we will cure that later. Uh, the second reason is that there aren't enough examples. So I have this example WG, uh, but that's pretty much the only example I, I know. I mean, there might be more, but, but it's the only one I know. Okay? Uh, and it's strange, but uh, but once you relax one of, one of the conditions, so one of the conditions was the involutivity, so S squared, the, identity, the square of the antipode is equal to one. Once you relax this, you get many more examples. But it sort of doesn't make sense to relax this because, uh, uh, well, because if you reverse a strand twice, you come back to where you were. So we have to find a universe in which reversing a, a strand twice doesn't come back to where you were. So that's a little bit of more work before we can do more examples. Okay? 
And the, the last reason, which I, the, the last reason to be dissatisfied, which I want to cure first, is that it's a bit fuzzy. So what do I mean by fuzzy? Um, so, you know, I want to say Z preserves structure. The standard way in mathematics to say that Z, that Z preserves structure is to say that Z is a homomorphism. But you know, I, I don't like to spell too long words, so I'll just say morphism. So Z, sh Z should be, a, in fact, I have no idea why, why, why the word homomorphism was ever invented. Uh, a morph morphism is good enough. So Z should be a morphism, but it should be a morphism of what? Right? What is the algebraic structure for which Z is a morphism? So it's not the EHOP itself. Because the thing on the right is not the Hopf algebra, it's various powers of the Hopf algebra. Besides, tangles don't make a Hopf algebra. They're something, but they're not Hopf algebra. OK? Uh, so uh, uh, um, what I want to say is that this is a morphism of meta hop sorry meta involutive involutive uh, and we will drop the involutive later so meta involutive hop algebras this space on the right is a meta e hop and the space on the left is also a meta e hop and, uh, and that's the correct kind of algebraic way to say what we have. Okay? Except it's not tangles that are meta, meta e hop, but virtual tangles. And in fact, the, everything we do extends to, vir so far, everything we do extends to virtual tangles whatever that is. Uh, actually, later, uh, I will drop the condition S squared is equal to the identity. And this will amount to uh, adding the word rotational here. So it will be rotational virtual tangles, dropping the word involutive from here, so also from here, but also from here. Okay, so, so that will come later. Okay. Uh, okay, so first of all, uh, what's a metamonoid? Okay, sorry, so uh, you know. Um, Kashin? Yeah? Would it be dropped from here as well? Uh, uh, yes. But sort of, so I'm going through, I'm, I'm going through the machine as we know it now, and later, later we will modify it a little bit. Okay. Uh, so um, you know, Hopf, a Hopf algebra is a complicated thing. It's an algebra with a co-algebra structure with some compatibility rules. Blah blah blah. So let's start with a meta, with a monoid. Okay. So uh, uh, a monoid is a, right, so a, a monoid is just something with a multiplication. Later I'll, I'll kind of add stuff to it. So a monoid is a, 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 a basically a group without inverses. So uh, uh, you have multiplication rule, it's associative, and I think it has an identity, OK? So uh, suppose M is a monoid. Uh, so if M is a monoid, then uh, uh, you get uh, lots of operations from m to the x, from spaces of the form m to the x, to spaces of the form m to the y. Okay, where x is a finite set, 
and y is a finite set. So x and y are finite sets. Namely, you can take, so basically elements here are like lists of elements of the monoid, and, uh, but, but the elements of the lists are labeled by, by, are indexed by a set x. So you pick two elements of that list, you multiply them, and you put it here under a different name. So there are operations, so basically if you look at the collection of all things m to the x, you have operations like m, i, j, k, which are the take the element, well, basically take the element labeled i and the element labeled x, multiply them and put it in position, so, uh, sorry, i, j, and put it in position k. Likewise, there, is an opera there are operations eta i, which means throwing the identity element with, label, with some specific label i. And finally, there is a binary operation. So there is an operation that takes uh, two elements here, so two lists, and produces one, and concatenates them. So concatenate the lists. Sorry, and not finally. And yet there is, sorry, and there is another operation which so far I've neglected, but I shouldn't have. And this is just the relabeling operation. We didn't need it, so I never mentioned it. But you can always say, well, this is a, a, a list, a label list of elements. So you can always take the element called George and change its name to John. Sorry for being so Eurocentric. OK? Uh, so let's call this operation sigma ij. You take element i and we rename it to j. OK? So what's a metamonoid? A metamonoid is the same, except the thing that appears here doesn't need to be the powers of a single set. So in other words, a metamonoid for every in a metamonoid, for every finite set x, you get a space m sub, m sub x. And then you have the exact same list of operations, m i j k, uh, uh, sigma i j, etc. OK? Now, these operations satisfy some relations. And we've seen them, like associativity. We've seen how to write it in this language. The axiom of associativity makes sense here, too. OK? Uh, uh, and in fact, even before fully defining what this is, so I, I still owe you a precise definition. But even before fully defining this, clearly tangles are an example. Not clearly. Tangles will be an example, OK? Because tangles have a set of strands. So you will look at tangles whose set of strands is, whose strands are labeled by the element of set, some set x. And then there is the stitching operation, which connects two strands. And there is the insert and empty strand operation. There is a relabeling operation. And there is a disjoint union. You can put two strands side by side. Sorry, two tangles side by side. So tangles are an example, but tangles are in no way the powers of a single set. So the, tangle, the, the tangles you can write on, on three strands are not in any way a power set. So, so that's the point of switching to metamonoids, because I want the left-hand side to be an example as well. OK? So now I can make it into a formal definition. So definition, a uh, meta monoid uh, is an assignment uh, from finite sets into sets 
which I will denote uh, x, sorry, this one is dead, which I will denote uh, x goes to m sub x uh, along, oops, sorry, along with uh, ops as follows. So uh, let's start with the stupidest, the relabeling. So uh, if I is not a member of some set X, I have a relabeling operation sigma I Sorry, if i and j are both not elements of some set x, then I have a relabeling operation sigma ij, and this is an operation from m x union i to m x union j. So sort of the way of saying that it changes i to j is to say that that you have a set X of things it doesn't touch, and then if you look at M of X with I, it, it, it maps it into M of X with J. I didn't yet say axioms. These are still the operations. So there will be axioms as well. Two, uh, if uh, I is different, is different from J, and you also have a K, and all three of them are not members of some set X, you have an operation M, I, J, K uh, going from M, X, union, I, and J into M, X, union, K. And notice, notice my convention, and this will forever be my convention, that uh, 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 the, the, well, the indices that disappear are, call, are, are at the top, and the indices that are created are at the bottom. So mijk is an operation from aij, or x union ij, to x union k, OK? Three, uh, there is an operation eta i. I don't need to write uh, what it is, because my convention explains it. But still, let me write it. It will be an operation from uh, mx into mx union i. This is the, on the assumption that i was not a member of x. Was it? OK? And finally, there is a disjoint union operation. Sorry, uh, 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 a, a union operation. So an operation union uh, going from mx uh, cross my into mx union y. But this is provided uh, uh, x is disjoint from y. So if you have disjoint set, sorry, equal, if you have disjoint set of labels, you can uh, concatenate lists and there is no ambiguity about the labels. Otherwise, you have two elements. I mean, if x and y are not disjoint, uh, then uh, like you, can't, you can't even work here because you'll have two elements with the same label. So, uh, so this is the third axiom. And by the way, this operation is also often denoted by dot, multiplication. And this is a binary operation, and all the other ones are unary. Okay? But of course, now I need to give you the axioms, such that. And the axioms are essentially all the axioms that hold here universally. You just copy them. OK? Uh, but uh, if I really, uh, and I don't want to write all of them, but let me write them uh, a, a somehow uh, schematically. So first of all, there are relabeling axioms. So
So uh, sigma i i is equal to the identity. If you relabel, you know, if you change the name of somebody from uh, Muhammad to Muhammad, uh, you've done nothing. Uh, sigma i j followed by sigma j i is the identity. Uh, right, if you change the name from i to j and then from j to i, you've done nothing. Uh, sigma i j followed by sigma j k, j k is equal to sigma uh, i k. Etc. Uh, then the, the re relabeling axioms interact well with all other operations. So uh, if you uh, rename i to i prime, rename j to j prime, and then uh, multiply uh, i prime with j prime, calling the output k, and then rename k prime, sorry, calling the output k prime, and then rename k prime to k, then this is um, m i j k. Right, just renaming and then multiplying and then, well, I, I don't need to say that. And similarly, etc. So similarly with eta. And similarly with the disjoint union. So if you rename one of the elements here and then take the disjoint union, you get, uh, uh, sorry, the multiplication, the product. If you rename one of the elements and then multiply, it's the same as uh, multiplying and then renaming. So basically, renaming acts like renaming. Uh, OK, so that's one set of axioms. And then in addition, addition, uh, the disjoint union operation is in itself associative and commutative. Yeah. So uh, this operation is associative and commutative. So basically, concatenating two labeled lists, it doesn't matter in which order you concatenate them. It's not really concatenated because they're not in order. The elements are with labels. So it's more con con taking the union of two dictionaries, it doesn't matter in which order the two dictionaries appear. Uh, so all of this is nonsense. So, I mean, so far everything is nonsense. Okay? And then the one axiom, the, 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 the two axioms that are not nonsense are the associativity of M and the fact that eta is identity. So, uh, eta i j k, sorry, M i j k, you know what? Since I can relabel, I may as well label them one, two, and three. So, M one, two, one followed by m one three one is equal to m uh, two three two followed by m one two one and and also an identity for eta but you don't I don't need to write them because I already wrote them you've seen them already I just made it the formal definition okay. So now that we have a formal definition, a formal definition, we can um, uh, look for examples. So example number one, take a monoid and look at m to the x. And that's also a metamonoid. So the collection of all m to the x's is a metamonoid. And example number two, Well, not quite nearly tangles. Why not quite? So, strictly speaking, or not strictly speaking, 
the way we okay sorry 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 I mean before uh, what do I uh, what do I uh, what would be MIJ and well what would be MIJ that's the only interesting op no sorry what will be these operations for tangles so basically MIJ should be suppose you have a strand I and a strand J then uh, M I J K and you know there are also other strands like these are the strand labeled X then M I J K should be you concatenate the strand I with the strand J calling the result K so like this is where you did the operation this is where you did the concatenation keeping everything else the same okay this actually does not make sense for tangles because uh, uh, if I want to connect the head of X with the with the head of I with the tail of J they have to be adjacent otherwise I wouldn't know how to connect them so if there were more in fact it's similar to the problem with 6 2 here you know if there were more more strands going here how going through how would I pass from here to here would I go over or under it's not well defined okay however in the world of virtual tangles it is well defined so what are virtual tangles? So vir virtual tangles are the combinatorial information of crossings without the insistence that this graph of crossings and edges between them will be planar. So uh, basically, you connect this edge to that edge, and you don't specify. The graph doesn't need to be planar, so you don't need to specify if you go over or under. So in virtual tangles it makes sense uh, yeah so by the way uh, if you want another definition of virtual tangles so here is a definition of a, 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 a of a virtual tangle so virtual tangles are the metamonoid freely generated by uh, two symbols, an overcrossing, which is an element, well, uh, of M, you know what, in fact, it's uh, an element of M12, and a, an undercrossing, which is also an element of M12. So it's the metamonoid freely generated by these symbols modulo the re relations and the relations are the Reitermeister 1 move, the Reitermeister 2 moves and the Reitermeister 3 moves and all of these relations can be written in a metamonoid so there are relations between these generators which can be written in the language of a metamonoid and if you don't believe me that they can be written in the language of a metamonoid go to last class and see that we've done it already, right? Because we verified each of them and the language we used was exactly this language, okay? Uh, so these are, so, so, so basically you, 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 so by, by applying uh, MIJK operations, also known as stitching operations, so by applying stitching operations to these two generators, you can stitch arbitrarily complicated graphs, sorry, by applying disjoint union, of union operations and then stitching, you can make arbitrary big graphs and then you mod out by exactly the relations of, uh, of uh, that you mod out by. So, 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 so this is literally the, the same, okay? Okay, any comments? A yes. question. Yeah, so after doing 
all these things in the virtual tangles and interior. Say it again. So after doing all these operations in uh, virtual tangles, yeah, and sort of dr maybe dropping, would it still make sense in tangles? I'm um, not sure what you mean. It's sometimes yeah. some virtual tangles are tangles. Yes, but not all. So so this so you know. Uh, I could refine this definition uh, and, and say uh, uh, and somehow make it more refined, but but so that it will apply only to tangles. Okay. And then the way to do it would be to say that uh, it, the set X here. Is not just an arbitrary set, but it it comes with a cyclic ordering. So, sorry, no, no. The set X here uh, comes with a cyclic ordering of its double. So basically, uh, if you have a tangle with two strands, it has four ends. Right, an incoming, uh, you know, two in, one, one, two, two incoming and two outgoing. So you want an ordering of the so so you want to say this is the uh, incoming i element and this is the outgoing i element. This is the outgoing j element. This is the incoming j element. So you know the, the set X will have to come with a bit of extra information. And then uh, these operations, it will be a bit harder to say what they are. But in particular, the stitching operation will be defined only if the i and j here are neighboring. Or more precisely, if i1 neighbors j0. If the output from i is, is, is adjacent to the input for j. So you could make a vastly more complicated definition, and then you restrict your attention to, to tangles. So by the way, you can ask a philosophical question. Uh, is it good that our, OK, sorry. So now our invariant is a, a metamonoid morphism from uh, tangles to uh, h to the x, so to, to the metamonoid h to the x, where h is our algebra. Okay, or more precisely, h to the tensor x. So we have a metamonoid morphism like that. Okay? Uh, sorry, but it's not tangles, it's virtual tangles. You can ask yourself a philosophical question is it good or bad? that we've extended from tangles to virtual tangles. And uh, the annoying answer is that it's bad. It's not good. You see, your first thought is, oh, it's better. We have a great, better theory. Not only it, it, uh, not only it is defined on tangles, it is actually defined on a wider class of things. But the theory that is defined on a wider class of things is weaker on the smaller class that you really care about. Because you're missing all those theories that don't extend to the wider class. You're missing all those invariants that don't extend to the wider class. So you have a weaker, so, so in a sense, the moment you say your invariant extends to virtual tangles, you're actually saying potentially it doesn't fully see the plane. If it doesn't see the plane, how can we expect it to see three-dimensional things? OK, so, uh, so, so, there is, so, so, so that's actually a weakness, not an advantage. But we'll get to it later. We'll, 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 we'll see what we can do about it later. OK? And uh, well, I'm out of time, but if I had a moment later, a, a, mo a moment further, I would tell you how to define a meta e hop. But you already know. It's completely obvious. You just do the same, but instead of 
start from a mono, you start from a from a from an involutive involutive whole algebra. So I'll mention it later. I will mention it next time, but uh, but really I'll pretend that it's easy. Okay. So see you uh, on Friday. Any questions, comments? Sorry, is that? really help us. It puts us in context. Okay? It's not, it, it, it's largely philosophical. I mean, I mean, again, mathematicians like to say, the way the mathematicians like to say is, we construct, not invariant preserving structure, you want to say we constructed a morphism. So I had to tell you amorphisms between which and what. And that's what I just did. But in, in, it doesn't make computations easier or anything. It's just the language in which to put these things. OK? Uh, and we'll get, it will get a little bit more complicated next time. OK. So yeah, see you next time.